Welcome to the Making Math Moments That Matter podcast. I'm Kyle Pierce. And I'm John Orr. We are from MakeMathMoments.com and we are two math teachers who together with you, the community of math moment makers worldwide who want to build and deliver problem-based math lessons that spark curiosity, fuel student sense making and ignite your teacher moves. My friends, Oof. we are together for another episode of the Making Math Moments That Matter podcast. Today, you've got John and I, uh, where we're mm-hmm, going to dive mm-hmm. right into an episode. I, I, I'm i hoping it's going to be a shorter one today, but it it's something that's been on our minds <laughs> right, quite yeah. a bit lately. Right, John? Yeah. And it's actually, uh, we, get, we get a lot of questions uh, about this because I think this is a common uh, a common issue when when teachers reach out to us, they'll say, you know, like I I I did I did one of your make math moments, you know, tasks from your website, or I used one, you know, an old one that you you guys had shared a long time ago, uh, or or I'm you know I've I've been dabbling with you know uh, Peter Lillidal's the thinking classroom, and it's it's and some people are like. But it's like, I feel like it's not what you guys say it is, or, mm-hmm. or it's not like, I don't feel comfortable yet. Or, the, or, you know, I've got, I've got, you know, this kid is like off task or, or doing something, you know, else. And I was like, is this, and they say, is this the way it's supposed to be? Like, there's some, mm-hmm. there's some frustration happening when you first start changing your, your lessons into problem-based lessons. And in this episode, we want to talk about like, what are the first things uh, what are the things like the norms? What are, what are the mm-hmm. what are the teacher moves that are like almost like behind the scenes, right, Kyle? That yeah. that you have to kind of think about and and remind yourself, and also remind your class, uh, so that you are setting yourself up and your students up for success. And I we don't talk about them a lot, um, I think, and but that's what this episode is. It's like what do we have to do first before we even attempt a problem-based lesson or a Mm three-act math task or even a math talk, right, Kyle? Absolutely. And, you know, a a lot of times we immediately, when people say, hey, I've I've tried, you know, I've tried to teach a problem-based lesson. I've I've tried to sort of like do that real flipped classroom like we were talking about back in uh, two or uh, uh, 157, I think it Mm -hmm. was. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, immediately we go to like, where's the breakdown happening in the lesson? But today's episode, we actually want to roll back. Like John said, we mm-hmm. want to roll all mm-hmm. the way back to before you even even talk about the structure of the lesson. We're talking about the classroom norms that are essential in order for any lesson to run without a hitch. And and I don't care how you're teaching, whether you're teaching right. with a gradual release of responsibility class, or whether you're doing a problem-based class, or whether you're using some other model that you're using and you're comfortable using. The reality is, is that if there aren't certain things, certain routines in place in the classroom, and I, we talk about classroom culture a lot, and we we believe you can build ca- classroom culture through the math, mm-hmm. but there are some things right up front that we have to make sure that are addressed. And, and of course, these would be some of the things around the routines of like, what's our math class going to look like and sound like when students come into our classroom? You know, what mm-hmm. what's going to be appropriate behavior in our math classroom and what would be maybe considered not appropriate to to do inside of that math classroom. Uh, so this can be really difficult. And, and I've got to say, John, the reason why it's on my mind is I know there's yeah. so many teachers mm-hmm. around the world dealing with different classroom situations. You've got some teachers doing virtual still. You have some teachers who are are teaching extended blocks, like in my district and in your district, you're teaching like double block periods in some cases or, and you guys, you're still all day. Like that is, that is a really big challenge. And you can imagine the shorter your class time is, the easier it is to let certain things slide and it Mm -hmm. to not completely break everything. But the longer that block stretches, those little details, it's like the more little details that are not in place, the the harder it is for you to Mm -hmm. actually engage students for any you know, significant amount of time. And also just to essentially get them to look your way and do some math learning. Yeah. And, and I'm glad you brought, you brought that up because I think what we share here today is going to help with, with, with dealing with situations like this, because uh, 
I, 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 I've got, I've got to think that, especially here in Ontario, we are still teaching in a pandemic. We are not back to normal um, at the time of this recording. And I think this will go out right after we record this. But, but you know, like teachers are either teaching four out of four with no prep break uh, on some weeks. Uh, we've got teachers who, you know, like I, I feel like there's a maybe it's maybe it's my school. I don't know, Kyle, if you notice this. It's like there seems like sometimes morale is down a little bit. Like mm. the kids themselves, I think are 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 I, I think from from my experience, my students that are coming in, it feels different from previous years. Like like. I, I I know there's a lot of frustrations that I'm feeling in my classroom that I haven't felt in previous years before the pandemic. And even the last year, even though we were teaching all day with the same group of kids, I don't think I felt the same frustrations I'm feeling now uh, back then, like even last year. So like, it's almost like the students themselves feel a little different, I think, coming in and there's an adjustment period here and teachers are, are dealing with that. They're dealing with behavioral issues, uh, issues on a regular basis. So uh, the other thing I, I, I was, we were talking about this before we recorded is, is that normally you know, uh, I think frustration of teachers hive not only with student behavior or student student engagement, but also like just feeling uh, the feeling a sense of belonging going to school or going to the workplace. And and I we talked about this before in the sense of like before the pandemic, we would go to the building and and and. I know that at lunch, you know, you would go to do your classroom and your classroom thing. But at lunchtime, the lunchroom was jam packed, like people were sharing stories and back and forth. And what did you do this weekend? And we all used to sit around the table and share and share all, all of those things. And you felt like that camaraderie. You felt that belonging that, you know, you've got these people that you can share with and, and sometimes, you know, decompress for that 35 minutes of your lunchtime. Mm -hmm. Um, and or maybe that's on your prep time too. You might have those conversations, but we are we are more and isolated now because some of those like those big group tables can't happen still. So so I I think there's a lot of like frustrations happening around like I go to work, but then I just go home. You know, it's not mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, may, maybe not, maybe the little listeners here aren't feeling like that, but I know that I am, and I know that it's helped me think about what we're going to discuss here because it's helped in my classroom to reevaluate and re come back and recenter where we are. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of these things, of course, you know, when we're recording this, we are well into the school year. So, you know, some people might be thinking, oh, you know, it would have been nice to know this at, you know, the first day of right. school. And the reality, though, is, is that it's never too late. It's never too late to sort of hit that pause button and sort of reflect and think about, like, what are the things that are working in my classroom and what are the things that maybe aren't working so well? And sometimes I think we jump to conclusions uh, around why students might not be engaged. Um, but a lot of times it comes down to sort of just the expectations that are set or maybe not clearly outlined. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. I think that can that can happen as well. Like, John, you're in the in the scenario where you're with a group of students all day. And I feel like it could be easier to maybe let things slide than to kind of have maybe a tighter ship like you might have when it's a regular length class, right? Mm -hmm. And the reality is, though, is that all of these little pieces sort of add up and or, you know, you can almost say, you know, subtract away from the effectiveness of whatever it is that you're going to be doing in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've been mm -hmm. in a lot of classrooms. Something I've noticed, and this is just a general observation, is that students to me, you know, having, you know, been working with teachers mostly virtually last year, this year I'm back working in, in schools with students. And what I'm noticing is a, a, a big difference between just the, the general accepted use of cell phones, for example, hmm. in the classroom, just in general, like, and, and I'm just seeing it and, and I, I'm, this isn't a, a blame teachers thing because I think it has a lot to do with the fact that students for more than a year, in some cases, were right. online, left to their own devices, literally, and, you know, had that had that phone there the entire time. And it, it's almost like that addiction has sort of grown and has really, mm. you know, sort of like busted into not only in the classroom, but in the hallways, students are buried in their phones. And, you know, that's one thing that I'm noticing. And, and I can imagine how, you know, 
it's like, do I really want to bark up that tree? But uh, you know, I, yeah. I guess the message I have is it's almost, it's so worth it to work on some sort of norm with the students, right? A yeah. And try to figure out like, how can we do this, especially if it is a long period, you know, how could we do this where like maybe, you know, everybody wins? Uh, and, you know, I know, John, you and I have talked a, a few times about this, like, you know, what are some some things that you've used in your right. classroom to try to, again, I would say this one is like, it, it's a huge gatekeeper to student engagement, right? If like, if that phone's there, it can be really challenging, no matter what you do, yeah. in order to bust through whatever it is that they're thinking about in that phone, right? Right, right, yeah. And so, so I guess this comes out to the the, the big up message we want to share in in this episode is is the elements that go that go into your classroom design um, before you could attempt to do a lesson or the math talk or the problem based lesson or you know a would you rather or or, or any activity you're going to do in your class. These norms have to be have to be set, and then and then, like you said, Kyle, they can be revisited, they can be retouched. But that's that's really the message here. In in what I uh, I've shared this, I think in one one other episode before, um, and actually we were trying to figure out which one it was, and you know, there's so we actually so have many. a lot, and I couldn't find it, um, which episode it was. But really, I feel like when I have discussions and in, in recenter with my students, because because I definitely have these issues too, Kyle. I've got students who, you know, no matter no matter how engaging of my lesson is and how met how I've set you know these things up, we have to come back and recenter and re and re kind of talk about what our classroom pillars are, and and that's usually when I uh, I make decisions or we as a class make decisions, and we everything kind of falls back to these four classroom pillars that I usually outline on day one uh, as as what I want math class to look like, and I think I think like I we're, I'm going to share my four pillars, but I think it doesn't it, it almost doesn't matter what for my four pillars are for you i think it matters what you should choose as good val like good values you want to see in your math class right so think about what do you want good learning to look like in your math class and when you come up with that what does that look like think about what are the what are the big things that i can always fall back on as any decision that gets made in the classroom versus you know, the late policy, the assessment policy, the, you know, the norms about going to the bathroom and the cell phone use, I, you know, policy, like everything that gets made, every decision that you make as a teacher or a kid makes in the classroom should fall back on these things that you want to you represent good learning. And I, that's what I usually do with my students. It's like we remind ourselves about these four pillars of learning in our math class or four good you know things about uh our, what, what we want our math lessons to look like and it has to deal with you know you know uh what i value in in good learning with my students and and usually what on the first day we get students to kind of brainstorm what they think good learning should look like and i already know what four i'm going to talk about kyle so mm -hmm. so it's kind of like i funnel them with some lots of brainstorming to like kind of like what we do with our three act math tasks and our problem based lessons with our notices and wonders we know exactly which learning goal we're going to do that day it's the same idea with these four pillars of learning but basically everything that we decide uh in our class falls down to being curious being collaborative, valuing growth and getting challenged. And that's every one of my classes I start with in the beginning, uh, always, we always talk about these four things. So, and, and our, uh, Kyle, our three-part framework fit into these, uh, these yeah. four things for sure. Absolutely. And I love how, you know, something that I think is worth mentioning again, is this idea of how you're essentially generating these norms from the student voice, right? Mm -hmm. And we talk about this a lot when we're doing a problem-based lesson. We want the student voice to come through and we want them to feel like their voice is being honored, it's being heard. Well, the same is true in the classroom norms. There's kind of two ways you can go, right? And, and of course, everything in between. But one way is you come in and say, here's the rules, right. you know, here's the expectation, here's how this is going to go. And, you know, oftentimes, and I've been there, I've done that, you know, I, I'm guilty of that. I, I've sort of like, let's get the show on the road. Here we go. Here's how it's going to be. Boom, 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 boom. And for some students are like, all right, they just, they come into line and, and, and that's fine. But for other students, they might not. And then the part that you don't get when you sort of just 
you know, lay it down. Here's how it's going to be. Right. Students often don't understand the why. It's just like math class, right? It's like right. we want them to understand the why of the mathematics. Well, with these classroom norms, we want them to understand the why behind why we don't want the cell phone out. It's not just because I don't want you exactly. to have a cell phone or I don't want you to be able to message your friends. It's because it's interfering or it's distracting you from hitting one of our pillars. And, and John, I'll repeat yeah. them. You said be curious, yeah, collaborative growth it's everything is right. about growing and right. learning yeah I'll, and is a challenge right yeah, i can elaborate a little bit more i'll elaborate a little more this is what i usually do with our students once once we kind of brainstorm i'll, I'll kind of like summarize where we are and and basically i always start with big being curious with them to say to, to remind them or, or or share with them that hey this math class is going to be maybe a little different than before because i'm going to all the lessons that we do all the learning that we're going to do i'm going to rely on your curiosity because i because curiosity is so important when you go to learn something think about things you've learned uh maybe you you went down a path and you learned how to play the guitar maybe you learned about something else but you were curious to do that and so curiosity is like our it opens the gates of your brain so that you can you you are receptive to learning so i'm going to put you in situations where it sparks your curiosity i'm going to rely on you to be curious about how to solve different problems so we have a big discussion about why curiosity is super important which does fall into our three-part framework being sparking curiosity being one of the one of the big things there and this the second the second piece that i stress a lot with my students is this collaborative nature and that that kind of of goes hand in hand with what we learned with Peter Littledall and his thinking classroom and his group work and his random grouping. But I, I come at it with the students in a, in a sense that you are going to be collaborative. I'm going to put you in groups. I'm going to have you work with different students every single day because we need to feel comfort here in the room. We need to be, if we're going to share ideas, if we're going to, if we're going to strengthen our math understanding, you're going to voice those out to the class. In order for you to do that, you have to feel a comfort with the people in the room and if you don't know them and you don't and you don't you know work with them then you won't feel that comfort so we have to we have to work with each other on a regular basis so we will feel comfortable and if and if we feel threatened in our room then we won't share and our brain will go into shutdown so so we need to make sure that we routinely work with each other so that we get to know each other and we understand each other and we can help each other. So collaboration is so important in our room. And, and that would be one of the pillars. So lots of things can fall back on saying, Hey, we, we don't, we, we, we a kid might say like, I want to sit with so-and-so today. And I say, well, remember that our, one of our pillars is collaboration and, and you're, and we're working with random groups so that we can, you know, make sure that we're safe and feeling comfortable with each other. And, and if we're always going to work with the same people, then that violates that pillar. And remember, we set that pillar at the beginning of the year, like th every decision being made can come back to that. Like the, think of the cell phone use policy, Kyle, like, like if a kid is on his cell phone, when you're doing group work, then they're violating the collaboration pillar, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm on my cell phone and I can't be sharing my understanding or working with this group because I'm looking over here at my cell phone. So it's an easy kind of like, hey, let's put that away right now because mm -hmm. we're working in groups and you're violating the collaboration pillar right now because, hey, th they need your help here and we're working together and we got to we got to we got to do this. And I, and I love too that you could really pick any of those pillars and, mm -hmm. and that would be a reason for, let's say, a cell phone or let's say, you know, just, just general, you know, disengaged behavior, because again, you're, you're not growing right. right now. You're not being challenged. Uh, you're not being collaborative and you're not being very curious because you're not involved in this situation as well. And, mm -hmm. you know, the, the part I love about these pillars is because again, you're being super clear. So everything we're asking of students, it's not an us versus them. It's a, Hey, I just want to remind you right. about what we were talking about. And, you know, this one, I had a conversation with a teacher today about this very thing. And it's the idea of growth and about students participating. And there's, it's, it's a fine line because I know here in Ontario and many places, you can't actually evaluate students on their participation. I know some places still do this, uh, but here in Ontario, participation is not something that is uh supposed to actually nope. influence what do you mean your final grade yeah you what you mean kyle is like i come to class today and hey i raised my hand and i gave an answer and now the teacher puts a little check mark in the box that says 
five points to you. Exactly. So it's like, you know, you got these. And, and so like, that was, that was the old school participation, uh, yeah. but with this pillar that you're referencing with, with growth in the classroom, right. I was trying to help this teacher sort of bring this to light is that, you know, when students are in the classroom, they have to know, right? So again, you're calling it pillars. I said, I, 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 they have to know that I'm watching what they do in order to help determine where they are growing, where their strengths are, and where we might need to do more work mm -hmm. together. And what that means is that I'm using that as evidence of your learning. And we're not going to allow you to, for example, sit back and do nothing during class right. and then come and just write an assignment or, or write a test. And, you know, maybe the student does really well on the test. It's like, but, but you haven't actually shown me throughout the learning, right? Because one, one snapshot test doesn't evaluate everything, right? I mean, right. I know oftentimes we overweight it, but ultimately it's like, I want to see that growth. I want to see where you are and I want to actually give you credit for the growing that you're doing and the growth that you're doing through the different challenges, which is this fourth pillar that we're going to be giving you in the classroom mm -hmm. that, you know, we're not going to be sitting here. You're not going to sit back and sort of just copy things down and then do the work later to, yeah. to memorize. <clears throat> like that's not mm -hmm. what we're talking about here. We're talking about you doing the work together, collaboratively, challenging yourself, getting right. curious about why things are happening and where they're happening. And we're going to bring that together and use that and make that the core of our classroom. And again, all of these ideas, while we talk about them in our three-part math framework, the reality is, is that these ideas are things that you can do regardless of the model that you're using or following, right? Mm -hmm. These are, these mm -hmm. are pillars that you can elicit from students. But again, you've got to be clear on them. And I, I think that's one of the key pieces and yeah. messages from this episode is like, we as the educator, we have to know what it is that we want our students to be doing in our classroom, right? Like, I know I don't like when they're on a phone, but what is it that I would rather them be doing right now? And, and if it's just like, put it away and watch me, well, then I don't know, that's going to be harder to kind of convince a student of. But if it's, no, no, I want you to be engaged in this problem that everybody's working on and, and contribute your voice, right. you know, that might be something that a student, you know, might not love the idea at first, but ultimately they could, they could see why you need to be a part of this class and, and of this discussion and not right. on your phone or not disengaged. Yeah. And, and, and I think it's important, like, you you said is is that it's sometimes you have to have the reminders you sometimes you have to like cycle back because because i know kyle like i do these on day one and and i'm teaching grade nines right now and and i've got you know i've got all various levels of grade nine we're, we're in you know an open an open class uh right now right we went detracking and and it for here in Ontario, which has lots of great advantages here. And, and, and I do enjoy this class, but the varying levels, you've got students who are like, I hate math class. Like they came in that way. And, and sometimes there's almost like, you feel like there's nothing you're going to be able to do there. And I feel like when we have our pillar talk, and then we had to do that this week, we had to cycle back to the pillar talk because sometimes students Sometimes students, and especially this happened to me a lot before I started to have the pillars talk at the beginning or in the middle, but it definitely helps when students are thinking that the math teacher is the enemy, right? It's mm. like, I'm here because I have to be. And then it's like, I'm going to like make sure I, I don't really want to be here. So I'm going to try to like figure out how to get out of class or how I'm going to be, how do I, you know, I'm going to hide my phone under you. Like, like when I have the pillar talk, with that student or, or the, or the group of students or, or whole class sometimes. Uh, and I try not to do the whole class uh, all at once on these, on these kind of talks. It, it, sh it shows it's, sh you know, I think it reminds that student that says like, I'm not the enemy. Like I'm, I'm here because I care about these four things. And we always said that, right? Like everything mm -hmm. that I've done in this classroom is because I care about these four things for you. Right. Like I'm asking, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not asking you to put your device away because, because I'm, you know, you know, I'm a jerk. 
<laughs> and I'm just, I'm the enemy and I'm trying to make your life miserable. It's, it's, it's because I want to challenge you and I want to like see your growth. And I can't see that if, if these are the things blocking that. Right. So like mm-hmm. those, those small conversations are, are important and, and it's important to cycle back. And I had to do that with a few students that this week, or sorry, I guess it doesn't matter, but it was last week on the time of this recording, but uh, well, it- and, and and you know what, to like something interesting as well. And I think it's important for educators to think about, because again, you know, you're referencing how this is something you do on like the first day of school and you cycle back to, mm-hmm. but that also doesn't discount from, let's say maybe, maybe you didn't set the norms as clearly as maybe you might have wanted to. Mm-hmm. Like, I know I didn't for many years, I, I came in and I had like, this is the rules and just, you know, follow the rules. And if you don't follow the rules, you know, there's a consequence. Well, it, it's like that talk is different when, you know, if students aren't doing what you would like them to be doing, you know, there's just like this general, you know, like I said, just like kind of a general disengaged behavior happening in the classroom where it's sort of like they're there because they have to and you know they're gonna like do you know i guess like the the bare minimum of what you ask of them Mm -hmm. it's like maybe maybe now's a good time to like think this through write down your pillars they don't have to be the same four that we've referenced here but I, i bet you they're gonna have some sort of you know commonalities and maybe maybe do that brainstorm like it i think it's a worthwhile thing to do in the middle of a semester or a school year if mm-hmm. things aren't going well like you just you're just feeling like every lesson is like a struggle and there's teachers out there who who have this or maybe you're a coach and you're listening to this or a consultant and you're listening you're going i work with teachers who are struggling with this idea you know helping them to go you know maybe maybe we need to hit that pause button let's let's like ask the students like let's get the students talking about you know and asking them why like why is this a problem like why is this a challenge and you know we i think about things as like productive or unproductive right like so so what's happening in the classroom right now that's productive you know and you could highlight mm-hmm. some of those ideas and then after like what are some of the things that maybe aren't so productive and again productive to what I've, you've got to highlight some of those ideas that are, you know, really important to you. So get those out, get the kids sharing what, what, what is good learning? Like, what does that look like and sound like to them? And then try to help them sort of, you know, come to the conclusion or the realization that, oh, maybe, you know, doing this or not doing that is actually, you know, more of an issue than I realized. And I, I think by doing this, it's never too late. And the reality is, is it might feel like you have to be really on the ball for, you know, a little while after, like you can't have the talk and then sort of go back to, you know, things are just happening the way they're happening. It's got to be, you know, sort of like a bring everybody back. Oh, quick reminder, you know, let's check out this pillar. Like, I, I feel like we're doing this really well right now, but this over here, I don't know. So ultimately at the end of the day, Uh, John, like we've talked about some of these things. And and again, I'm hoping people are maybe nodding their head a little bit, because again, sometimes we go a little too far into the lesson itself, or, you know, my, my task wasn't engaging Mm -hmm. enough or something about you and the lesson you planned when in reality, oftentimes it's something bigger than that. It's something that, you know, we have to sort of like zoom out and like, forget the lesson for a second and just kind of think about like, how do we want this classroom running? How do we want these routines looking and sounding in our classroom? And if we can do that, and if we can sit and think with intentionality about what it is that you want to elicit from those students, Mm -hmm. then you can have that conversation and start making steps in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. So uh, let's, uh, let's wrap uh, some of the summary up here, Cal. So big takeaways. I think we want to remind here is uh, don't be afraid uh, to take that step back, like Kyle just said, and, and reflect and, and pause and, and rethink and, and rejig if needed to think about what's working well, what's not working well. Uh, how can you make changes? Can you can you do that? Zoom out. Um, give yourself permission, I think, to to reflect and reset. I think sometimes that's hard for us to give ourselves that permission. 
Um, and you know, you're not, you, you aren't a math mold maker because you're perfect. You're a math mold maker mm-hmm. because you reflect, you, you plan, you replan, you retry, you, things aren't going well. You try again. Like, I think that's what makes, you know, you Kyle, a math mold maker, me, you, know, you at home right now, like that's what makes a math mold maker, not, Hey, I'm always engaging all the time. It's because we try this and we have we know we we make adjustments along the way and i think that's really what makes a great math mold maker awesome stuff awesome stuff friends as always how are you going to reflect not only on your classroom and how things are running in your classroom but how are you going to reflect on this episode uh, it kind of goes hand in hand here right so lots <laughs> to think about after this particular episode so have you uh, written these ideas down are you a sketch note artist uh, have you sent out a tweet or called a colleague be sure to engage in some form of reflection to ensure mm-hmm. that this learning sticks Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also in, in order to ensure you don't miss out on new episodes uh, of our podcast as they come out every Monday morning, uh, be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Yes. And if you like what you're hearing, please share the podcast with a colleague and help us reach an even wider audience, especially because now we've got these things going on YouTube. So Mm. uh, some of you, hello, everybody, we're waving at some of you on YouTube right now. Every Monday, not only do we release the podcast on YouTube, but we also release helpful videos uh, such as our math talks video recently, or how you can use questioning to emerge Mm. mathematical behaviors in math class. So head over to uh, makemathmoments.com and uh, look for us on Twitter at Make Math Moments or on YouTube at Make Math Moments and uh, hit that subscribe button. Show notes and links to the resources uh, we discussed here in this episode uh, can be found at makemathmoments.com forward slash episode 159. Again, that's makemathmoments.com forward slash episode 159. And uh, uh, we've got transcripts over there too. Uh, I forgot to mention that, but uh, transcripts are also found on that link. Awesome. Well, until next time, Math Moment Maker friends, I'm Kyle Pierce. And I'm John Orr. High fives for us. And a high five for you.